All right, so this is a good video for if you're trying to time your camshafts in your CJAA. This is a 2011 Volkswagen Jetta TDI. And uh, what we did here is we have uh, the exhaust cam gear and then we have the intake cam gear. So what you do is you put the, the exhaust cam gear in or the camshaft in and then you pin it with the plate here and then there's a pin in the back. That sets the timing for the exhaust gear. After that, you have to line up this right here, make it completely flat with this. So what I did is I grabbed a feeler gauge. There's a little bit of a piece that sticks out here. So if you put it up against it, it won't, it won't lie flat. So you have to put it a little bit further back and it should look straight across. So you can see it's pretty even right there. So what we did here is we took all of the rocker arms out. So that way it'll sit completely flat in the bearings here. And then we're going to put the cam carrier over top of that. And then we're going to zip tie the cam carrier and the camshafts together. So that way we keep our timing because it seems like every time we take this plate off, everything gets messed up when the rocker arms are on. And then uh, when he's taking this off, I'm going to hold both of my hands down on both of these camshafts. So that way they don't move or anything. So that way they keep their timing. All right, so we put the cam carrier on and then we put the zip ties through. Uh, best way to do the zip ties is to pre-lay them out before you even put them through because they are very difficult to get through. But as you can see, there's a gap right there and you can stick them right through there. We actually did three zip ties. We did one right next to the cam gears so that way when we pull up the camshaft carrier, it doesn't uh, rotate any of the cam gears or they don't fall out in any way. I would highly suggest doing three, otherwise you might lose your timing when you pull it off. And there's a gap on there. So we did two zip ties. And then also when you're doing this, make sure that this bearing or this seal is in the right direction and that you put the, the rubber part in the right direction as well. So you can see on this side, there's no little like, there's like little circles on the other side of it, which you can't even see. All right, here's the other side of that seal that I was talking about. As you can see, there's little dots going around the whole thing. I am pretty sure that those go towards the inside of the camshafts. And the other side is the side that you'll see me showing you on the video. That side, I'm pretty sure, faces outwards. I don't know for 100% fact if that is the case. But also, as you can see, the very inside ring, the way that it's facing, you want it to be facing the other way when you're putting it on so that way it doesn't bend backwards when you're pushing it on but this side has no little circles it's pretty smooth it just has like a little bit of bumps in it and then the other side has a little circles because there's a oil supply uh, hole in there that supplies oil to that um, that seal right there and when you're putting the seal on, you gotta remember you're pushing the seal on the shaft and there's going to be a little rubber part. So you want the rubber part to go in the right direction. You don't want it to be going against it. So just pre-push that rubber in the right direction for that. But all we did was we tightened these down by hand and then we tightened them a little bit more with a tool just to get it set. And then we have the zip ties through. So now we're going to take this off and then we're gonna put the rocker arms back in and then we're gonna put it back on with the sealant and all that. And then we're gonna cut the zip ties and recheck everything to make sure it's all good. All right, once you take off the whole assembly, you gotta be really careful because we thought we had our zip ties really tight, but apparently we didn't and they like to move a lot, but they stayed together and they only turned together. So they should still be in time. We're gonna check it afterwards then. But you wanna put down your sealant too. We used anaerobic gasket maker from Permatex. And then you wanna make sure that you have your seal in. And then the other seal is right down in there on that side. It's hard to see. You can see those little dots that I was talking about too. Those little indents. And then we put our rockers and lifters back in and now we're ready to put this back in and then uh, hopefully we're good. All right, so after you carefully put in the cam carrier with the camshafts, you gotta be really careful that you don't twist them or spin them in any kind of way more than normal. Just set them down really gently. After that, we slowly 
hand tightened all of the bolts till they touched. Uh, the zip ties were making it resist a little bit, so we had to use a wrench to tighten some of the end bolts. Uh, this side was good just because where we put the zip tie, there wasn't that much the zip tie to resist because it was on the end, it wasn't that far. And then this one, there was a lot more to resist because there was two zip ties and they were both near the end so it didn't want to sit flush. After you get all that in, we put this on and we put the peg in there to put it on top dead center. And then after that, I took a picture with it like this and then you can see the line from here to here and then if that is completely square with this in the middle here and what you can do is if you can't really tell you can have uh, on your phone or something you could draw like a square or make a square or something and just line it up and then uh, you should be able to check but yeah after that you just cut the zip ties and then torque everything down all right so this is what I meant by squaring it so as you can see, I put a little square. I mean, the picture's a little distorted. You can't really see it completely, but I have an iPhone, and what I did is I went to the photo, and then I clicked Edit, and then on the top right corner, you have the little pencil-looking thing. You click on that, and then after that, you see the little plus sign at the very bottom right. You click on that, and then you can see the little square circle. They have a little speech box-looking thing and an arrow-pointing thing. I use the square because the square is very easy to get a straight line across without having to, like, if I tried to draw it, I wouldn't be able to draw that straight line. The square, I know, is going to be a straight line. So I lined up the square with where the uh, cam carrier and the cylinder head meets, where that seam is, and then I had that go across into where that part of the camshaft is, and then you could see right there in the picture how it lines up and how it's all flat and everything's parallel the way it's supposed to be. Also, the torque specs for these are 6 foot-pounds or 72 inch-pounds. I would highly recommend using a torque wrench that goes in inch-pounds because we used one that went in foot-pounds and our lowest setting was 5 foot-pounds and we ended up over-tightening something and it snapped a nut because the torque wrench never clicked. Fortunately, we were able to recover it because it was one of the studs that snapped, but yeah, just try and avoid that mistake.